What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with the weapon stats on every gun as well as their variants in Infinite Warfare. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the Type 2. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so let's hop right into the stats for the base Type 2. We've got a damage profile of 23 to 19, which means we deal 5 shots up close and 6 shots in the longer ranges. Now I do say up close with the 5 shot kill range, but it's actually a very long range, which we'll look at in a little bit. But it's going to be either a 5 to 6 shot kill. Our rate of fire is second fastest for the full auto assault rifles. It's only beat out by the OSA, and it is slightly faster than the K-Bar at 779 rounds per minute. And our time to kill is actually slowest in the assault rifle category up close at 308 milliseconds, and then 389 milliseconds within the 6 shot kill range. So even though it has a really fast fire rate, it's going to take a minimum of 5 shots to kill, and therefore it has quite a slow time to kill. One thing to also consider though, is a lot of people get hung up on this time to kill. At mid ranges, it's one of the best assault rifles when it comes to time to kill. It's just up close where it really falls down. Moving into aim down sight time, it's standard for assault rifles at 250 milliseconds. Our sprint out time, also standard at 150 milliseconds. Our reload add time is 1.74 seconds, and I've got a little asterisk next to that because when you put this in a Kimbo mode, it actually reloads about twice as fast. Now, even though it is about twice as fast, if you're just wanting to try and take advantage of that just to get a reload in, it's not worth the amount of time it takes to switch over to a Kimbo mode, then reload and then switch back into AR mode, so you don't really gain any advantage there. But just know, when you are in a Kimbo mode, you will reload your gun about twice as fast. As for our movement speed, standard for assault rifles once again at 94%. Our magazine capacity is 35 rounds, and our total starting ammo, including the magazine you spawn with, is going to be 96 rounds. Once again though, I've got a couple little stars next to those. As soon as you switch over to a Kimbo mode, it doubles your ammo. So you get 35 rounds in each hand, and then also the ammo in reserve will double when you switch over to a Kimbo mode. But when you switch back to assault rifle mode, it halves that. Now unfortunately for a Kimbo mode, I don't have all the hard stats on that. I don't really have any hard stats on that. But I do know that the damage or the range has been reduced significantly when you switch over to a Kimbo mode. It now takes about six shots to kill right up close rather than five. So just keep that in mind when you are swapping to a Kimbo mode. Yes, you get double the fire rate. Yes, you double your ammo and everything, but you are going to be dealing a bit less damage. Getting to our ranges, this is where the Type 2 really excels. As you can see here, its five shot kill range is insane. It's 58 meters, which is long beyond most gunfights. There are very few practical lines of sight that are beyond this range, so it's absolutely incredible it's almost always going to be a five shot kill. Now popping a suppressor on there will reduce it by 25%. And even though that's a pretty decent reduction, it's still an amazing range and it's still gonna be a five shot kill at most ranges, as long as you're not trying to pick people off across the map. As for particle amp, it will increase that range by 20%, but I would say this is a completely wasted attachment because like I said, it's hard to find lines of sight that are beyond the base five shot kill range. So don't even worry about particle amp. Getting into headshots for the Type 2, we've got a standard headshot multiplier at 1.1, which takes our headshot damage profile to a 2520. This means that if you're able to hit every single one of your shots in the head, it will reduce your number of shots to kill by one. In reality though, this isn't a really practical thing to do, so headshots are essentially useless on the Type 2. Until we pop on a Faraday Slug. Faraday Slug gives us a 1.35 multiplier to the head, and this means just hitting one shot to the head will reduce your number of shots it'll take to kill by one bullet. So within the standard five shot kill range, if you land three shots to the body, one shot to the head, it will be a kill. And within the six shot kill range, if you land four shots to the body, one shot to the head, it will be a kill. Also, one thing that's just interesting to point out here, in the six shot kill range, if for whatever reason you can manage to land four shots in a row to the head with Faraday Slug, it will be a four shot kill. Is this practical? Not at all. It's just sort of an interesting fact. Getting into hip fire, this is standard for assault rifles, it's the same as the NV4 and the OSA, and it's only beat out by the K-Bar. As for recoil, the Type 2 is actually quite solid in the recoil department. You can see it does kick around a little bit, it does kick vertically a little bit as well, but the first several shots that you fire tend to be within a very small area, and therefore, as long as you're hitting your initial shots, you are able to get kills very effectively with the Type 2. If we just look at our 10 round wall test, where we only fire 10 rounds for our recoil pattern, and we use the foregrip, you can see that foregrip is actually quite useful on the Type 2. I would say it's not necessary because the Type 2 is quite accurate on its own, 
but it does make something that's already quite accurate just that little bit more accurate. As for our idle sway, it seems to be in line with the NV4, which is a really good thing. If you guys remember from the R3K as well as the K-Bar episode, the idle sway on those guns, as soon as you aim down sight, the idle sway kicks in shortly after aiming down sight. With the Type 2 and the NV4, you have a little bit of time where you have completely steady aim before that idle sway kicks in, which I find is definitely noticeable. So that's going to cover it for all of the base stats on the Type 2, now let's get into the variants. And first up, we have the first common variant called the Frenetic. This one just gives you steady, which reduces your hip spread and stacks with laser sight. This reduction is exactly 20%, and the cool thing is, it also applies when you're in a Kimbo mode with the Type 2, which means this weapon perk is quite a bit more powerful on the Type 2 than it would be on a standard gun that doesn't have that akimbo mode. So this is actually quite a solid variant, especially considering it's a common variant and only worth 200 salvage. Getting into the next common, we've got the Double Fist. This one gives you lights out, which increases your melee speed. And I did a little bit of testing on this, and I found that I'm able to get two hits in 13% faster when I have this weapon perk equipped. Just having a look at the clip here, you can see that that difference isn't really all that significant, and I don't really see much of a use in this variant unless you don't have any other variants of this gun. It's slightly better than the base type 2, but only in very specific situations. Moving on to the first and currently the only rare variant for the type 2, we have the Impulse. This one gives you Deathbringer, and with Deathbringer, double kills will instantly reload your magazine, which is a nice little weapon perk, pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. And then we also get Stockpile, which increases your ammo and stacks with extended mags. So with Stockpile, we get a magazine capacity increase to 42 rounds, and our total starting ammo will be increased to 73 rounds. But remember, when you break that type 2 in half, it still doubles this value. So each gun and each hand will have a 42 round magazine and your total starting ammo will be doubled from 73 all the way up to 146. Moving on to our first legendary, we have the Atomic. This one gives you nuclear, which means if you go on a 25 player kill streak with the gun, you will get a deatomizer strike. And then it also gives you low rider. And with low rider, you get reduced hip fire spread while you're sliding. Now I don't have the hard numbers on the hip fire reduction with low rider, but I did do a little bit of hand testing here, and based on my hand testing, it looks like you get a 25% reduction to your hip spread while you're sliding, which is quite noticeable. It's especially helpful when you've got these Type 2s in akimbo mode. Getting into our second legendary variant, we've got the Enforcer. This one gives you Gambler, and with Gambler, a 3-player kill streak will earn you a random perk up to a total of 3, and it will expire on death. So every time you get 3 kills in a row without dying, and keep in mind you can do this 3 times in a life, you will get a random perk added to your class. This is definitely a nice little bonus. I do like Gambler, but at the same time, it is random, so you never know what you're going to get with this. In addition to this, we get Sharpshooter, and Sharpshooter increases the damage range, and it will stack with Particle Amp. This range increase is a total of 5%. Like I was saying earlier, though, this 5% difference really isn't needed on the Type 2, since it already has such an amazing range. But Gambler is a decent weapon perk. So finally, the epic variant of the Type 2 that we have is called the Butcher. And this one gives you 87, which its alternate mode now fires as akimbo shotguns rather than akimbo assault rifles. And then we also get Readiness, which allows us to reload faster only when our magazine is completely empty, and that reload speed is increased by 40%. So focusing specifically on the shotgun aspects of the Type 2 Butcher, I don't have any of the hard stats whatsoever for this, so everything I did had to be hand tested. I don't have an exact damage profile, but I found the practical number of shots it took to kill within its potential range that it can actually hit enemies is going to be between 1 to 7 shots. When I was at that maximum range, it took me about 7 shots to actually kill the guy, which was quite a few. And keep in mind when I say shots, I mean per hand. So you can fire 2 shots at once, technically. Also, if you are point blank range, you have to be practically touching your enemy you will be able to get a one-shot kill with the Butcher. And by one shot, once again, I mean just firing one out of the two guns in your hand. For our rate of fire, I was able to calculate a rate of fire of 388 rounds per minute. Again, this is per hand. Technically, you can fire double that by firing with both hands. And just keep in mind, if we're comparing this to the other shotguns in the game, this is the fastest firing shotgun in the game. For our maximum hit potential range, this is only around 10 meters, which is actually shorter than all of the other shotguns in the game. Any range beyond this range right here, you aren't even going to deal damage to your enemy. Another thing that I found really interesting is each time you fire a shot, you only fire 5 pellets. Whereas with all the other shotguns, you fire 8 pellets per shot. 
Now again, keeping in mind, that's only looking at one hand at a time. So if you pull the trigger on both guns at a time, you are firing 10 pellets at a time. So it is better in that scenario than the other shotguns. But if we're just looking at per gun, you're only firing five pellets per shot. Also our hip spread, we can compare it to the other shotguns here. It's right in between the Banshee and the Reaver. And I would say it's about average for shotguns. So overall for the Butcher, I would say it's definitely better than using the Akimbo Assault Rifle mode on all of the other variants of the Type 2. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that it's like completely overpowered in shotgun mode. It's definitely a pretty solid shotgun up close, but it's not something that I would ever call overpowered. So that's going to wrap it up for all of the stats for the Type 2 as well as all of its variants. So for me, what is my favorite variant of the Type 2? Honestly, I don't really care too much with the Type 2. I don't feel like any of these variants give such a significant benefit that it's really worth running. If I had the Type 2 Butcher, I would run that over anything just because that Akimbo Shotgun mode is a lot more consistent than the Akimbo uh, Assault Rifle mode. But overall with this Type 2, I would say none of these variants really stand out in any significant way. I'd basically just use whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever seems to suit your intended playstyle. I honestly feel that on average, I would do just as well with a base Type 2 than I would with any one of these variants in the game. As for an attachment recommendation on the Type 2, for me personally, first off, I always use Quick Draw on my Assault Rifles, that doesn't change here. I really like Suppressor on the Type 2. This thing has such a crazy 5-shot kill range that when you pop a Suppressor on there, you're still almost always going to be in the 5-shot kill range. So I really like Suppressor on there, I like to play silently, and I like to try and keep people at sort of that mid-range to me. Also, I really like the Iron Sight, so I don't usually run a Sight with the Type 2. Sometimes I'll run a foregrip, although keep in mind it is quite an accurate gun, so it's not necessary. I just find in the engagement ranges that I tend to find myself in, I want to try and keep my gunfights a little bit longer range or mid to longer range. I feel like foregrip definitely helps in a lot of situations. So sometimes I'll use foregrip, but not all the time on this gun. And then finally, we have Faraday Slug. Especially if you're actively going for headshots for camos, definitely use Faraday Slug. But even if you aren't necessarily going for camos, the thing with Faraday Slug is you can now four shot kill an enemy as long as one of those shots hits them in the head. What this means is when you're playing against NV4s, which are like the most used gun and what a lot of people call the most overpowered gun in the game, the Type 2 is actually superior to the NV4 in every way as long as you can hit a headshot with Faraday Slug on the Type 2. It'll take you the same number of shots to kill, it'll only take you four shots to kill in core game modes. You've got a longer range for this four shot kill potential. You have a much faster fire rate and your accuracy is somewhat comparable to the NV4 as well with the Type 2. So Faraday Slug, as long as you're landing a headshot can definitely even up those odds when it comes to time to kill. Now, a lot of people might be asking, why don't you run Laser Sight for when you swap to Akimbo mode? For me personally, I never swap to Akimbo mode or very, very rarely do I swap to the Akimbo mode. I just keep it in Assault Rifle mode all the time and that way I just take the guesswork out of it. So if you are somebody that likes to swap to a Kimbo mode a lot, then Laser Sight definitely will help you here. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for today's gun guide. My overall thoughts on the Type 2 is I feel it's a pretty underrated assault rifle. I wouldn't call it top tier by any means, I don't think we're going to see it in competitive play anytime soon. But for public matches, as long as you're sticking to those mid sort of ranges, it's quite a dominant assault rifle within those particular areas. The problem is it's just not as versatile as some of the other options like the NV4. So if you guys haven't given the Type 2 an honest go, maybe you've just kind of used it once or twice and didn't really like the feel of it, try using it again and just make sure you're sticking to those mid sorts of ranges. Maybe pop a suppressor on there as well and see what you think of it once again. Maybe you'll end up discovering something that you've been missing out on this whole time. And with that, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what is your favorite variant of the Type 2? And overall, what are your general thoughts on the Type 2? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you kind of indifferent to it? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.